Welcome everyone to Cisco's Virtual Kitchen. We have Chef Amy in the house today. Hello. Hello, Chef. <laughs> we are talking plant-based savings today. This is mind-boggling, first of all, and this is a subject a lot of people, I think, may may not really understand or, or heard of in a, in a sense, and you're going to share some stuff today that I can't wait to talk to you about, but what are we doing today, Amy? Yeah, so um, we'll be, we're going to be making some plant-based breakfast options that are cost effective. Um, so on the menu, we'll be making a fried tofu egg with pesto sandwich and a French vanilla toast with um, with cinnamon whipped cream, uh, coconut cream. Yeah, so lots lots of different options today. Again, we're focusing on uh, saving saving that money. <laughs> saving the money, right? Money. It's it's quite it's quite a bit too when you look at these things that I have, and we're going to share them in a second here. But it's quite significant when you think. Yeah, about and it. it's a common misconception, as you and I were uh, talking about earlier, that plant based uh, cuisine and plant based eating has to be super expensive, and that is not the case. If you're using whole ingredients, um, it can actually save you money. I mean, uh, like the meat analogs and the, you know, the meat replacements and the cheese replacements can be great, but they can be expensive. And so we really want to focus on using whole ingredients as much as possible and using ones that are cost effective and then also tasty, of course, and sustainable. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So do you want to get into some of these things right yeah, now? Let's pull, yeah, let's pull up the slide. Okay, there we go. So, uh, first and foremost, today we're going to be focusing on da uh, dairy and egg substitutes because that's generally what we eat at breakfast time, dairy and eggs, right? And so here are some just as some examples of ways to um, to substitute um, uh, dairy and eggs in your in your um, daily diet, so to speak. So the at the very top there, um, you can see uh, we're talking a little bit about uh, dairy substitutes, so things like using unsweetened soy milk or almond milk in lieu of just cow's milk. Dairy is probably the easiest one to substitute if we're talking milk. There's so many different types of milks um, that are that are great tasting that are also sustainable too. So when, when we're talking about um, plant-based milks in particular, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it, cost is about the same. So if we're looking at almond and soy, it's about the same as, as regular cow's milk. So we're not um, increasing the price there Maybe. at all. Amy, yeah. is there some is, is soya better or is almond better? Is there one there better? Like that's a great question. Yeah. And nutritionally speaking, I always recommend unsweetened soy as um okay. as the superior uh option. Also, it's nut free, especially if we're working in large food operations that can't use nuts. Um soy milk in particular, one cup is eight grams of protein, which is comparable to um uh to cow's milk. So it's, it has a sim wow. similar nutritional profile, but with less saturated fat. Um, and it's also got more of a neutral flavor, which is great for, you know, baking, cooking. Like today, we're going to be using it in a, in a French toast recipe. Yeah. And um, so that's easy to replace the dairy component. Cheese, there's so many different types of cheeses out there. I mean, you can make your own using nuts, seeds, coconut oil. Um, very easy to do that. You can also use the, the ready-made ones as well. And there are some mm -hmm. more that there are, some, there are some that are more affordable than others. Um, but that would be probably the most expensive thing there. And of course... There are, you know, you could make a tofu feta that's cost effective as well using to crumpled tofu, you know, vinegars, um, oregano, uh, olive oil, and just mixing that all together. We have a great um, tofu feta recipe on the uh, Humane Society International Canada website, which is another reason why I'm here today. That and the, the forward, yeah. promoting the forward food program, of course. Um, but there are so many great vegan cheese options out there. Honestly, if you just Google, vegan you know vegan fat i just put vegan in front of whatever you want to make and yeah. there's tons of recipes there so, um, so is there something that we should watch out for when we're looking at those kind of cheeses yeah i mean melt you want it to melt nicely you want us to have that like you know that stringiness that um that actual cheese provides yeah. um if you're looking at uh, different nut cheeses um they generally are really great for for spreading so um, if you're replacing cream cheese, that's super easy. There's so many great options there. Nice. Um, 
Yeah, and just, you know, a little goes a long way, so to speak, especially if we're talking about cost there. But of course, you can make your own. Um, and then, actually, if you look on the slide there, there's a couple examples of cheese replacements. So top left is my, um, those are from my, my cookbook, the Long Table Cookbook, Plant-Based Recipes for Optimal Health, Large Quantity Cookbook. Um, top left, it uses coconut milk in lieu of cream, which is a great addition to, um, to soups and stews uh, and also baking. Um, and you can... You know, it's 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 actually cheaper than cream. So um, really? that's option, yeah. And then on the bottom there is my um, is my queso uh, is my queso, my dairy free queso, and it just uses potatoes and carrots. So steamed potatoes and carrots with roasted jalapenos, and you puree all that together, and it's super creamy and delicious. Um, so very very easy to replace replace milk in particular. Wow. Um, and then if we're talking eggs, there's tons of egg replacements, particularly if we're talking about ba uh, baking. And today I'm going to show you how to make a flax egg, which is um, something that you use and like uh, for, for pancakes, muffins, um, cookies, that sort of thing. And the flax egg actually helps to bind um, the ingredients together so that they don't crumble apart. So if we're talking about the amounts, it's one tablespoon of ground uh, flax plus three tablespoons of water mixed together. Zhuzh that up, let it sit for about five minutes to gelatinize, and that equals one egg in baking. Obviously, that wouldn't work for like scrambled eggs. <laughs> we wouldn't use that for scrambled eggs. We'd use something like um, like tofu. Tofu scrambles are all the rage these days. So or chickpea omelets. So using basan flour in lieu uh, of actual eggs. Um, the sky's the limit, really, in terms of egg substitutes. So, so, I'm going to show you one one way to do it uh, this morning. So, so I have a question for you, Amy, yeah. and and this may be, I don't know if this is a, a crazy question, but. So, so all these things, you know, I've been big on plant-based foods for quite a while and, and when they've come out and then since, and, you know, it's kind of exploded over the last, let's say six or seven years. Um, was, why are we in a sense finding these new ways now? Is people being more experimental? Like why all of a sudden all these amazing new ways are coming up now than they didn't come up like 10 years ago? Because yeah, we had flaxseed 10 years ago. We had mashed potato, banana, you know, all these things. Yeah. Why now? Yeah, I think people are really starting to care more about the environment where their food is coming coming from. They're 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 concerned about sustainability. They're concerned about their health. Uh, hopefully, potentially animal welfare as well. So I think people are just coming up with new and innovative ways. Um, yeah, to just make things that taste similar to the stuff that they're used to, just as good, just as um, tasty but also nutrient dense and also sustainable. Um, then another one to another egg replacement, the aquafaba, which is literally just chickpea water. So if you're throwing out your chickpea water, that can be used as an egg replacement. What? Um, yeah. You like, can like, like in the can? In the can, yeah. Or even if you're boiling it from, from, yeah, uh, from yeah. dry too. Um, and that makes, you can make meringues out of that. You can use it as an egg replacement. Um, it's really great to add to pancakes to make them nice, light and fluffy. And it also binds because there's, there's protein present in the, in the water. Yeah. So just so many options, but I think that's a really great question. Not silly at all. Like we're just getting more innovative and creative. Yeah. Which I, I did like plant-based for that reason. When it came out, it was like new yeah. things to play with, new ways to look at food. It was very exciting. It's just, now it's just kind of even. Like the water of a chickpea cat. I never thought of that, right? Like all these ideas are incredible. Yeah. And, and like into today's show is all about saving money. That would save so much money. Yeah. Let's actually, on that note, let's pull up the, the next um, slide here. So um, my friends at Humane Society International Canada, have, we've compiled um, kind of a plant-based substitute guide. Uh, so things if you're looking to substitute for, you know, red meats, um, cheeses, you know, dairies and dairy in general eggs it's all on this list it gives an, uh, an option of um, or what, what you would normally use and then a, a, a vegan option and then it gives you the um, the cost savings there and so we've wow. given, some, given some good examples um, I did do if you remember the last time I made uh, carrot locks so there's the example of the carrot yep. locks um, so if you're using that instead of salmon obviously that's going to be a lot a lot more affordable and it's 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 super flavorful and very tasty option um yeah just wow. to go over, go over a few options there are a few points there the as i mentioned cow's milk versus soy and almond milk about on par um and if we're looking at uh flax like a flax egg so one tablespoon of ground flax plus three tablespoons of water in comparison to an egg so egg would be about 25 cents per egg 17 cents for that that flax egg so again you're, you're you are saving a little bit 
of money there. In the end of the day, at the end of the day, if we're making large amounts, um, you're gonna it's gonna add up, right? Um, another good one, uh, chickpeas and eggs is another another good replacement. If you're making like um, egg salad sandwiches, you can use chickpeas, mashed chickpeas. Um, there are just, again, as I said, the substitutions are endless and the cost savings is endless as well if you're focusing on the right ingredients. Yeah, because it, like it just, I'm sitting here looking at all these things, like the bacon and the eggplant. Like that's crazy. Yep. Right? I think we've just, a lot of this is just tradition too, right? We've just used those because it's just what we've grown up with. It's just what we've had. I love how we're pushing this. This is incredible. Thank you. That's look, at awesome. the ground, look at the ground beef versus lentils. Yeah. Like, yeah. Beef. Yes. It's so great. In, I make a lentil bolognese all the time or use it in meatballs. Um, yeah. It's it's so versatile. And again, cheap, right? It's gonna, well, no, Okay. So I'm going to ask the, the billion dollar question. Is it harder? Um, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. I mean, if you're forming your own meatballs, that's labor intensive as it is. Right. And it's yeah. just, the, it's just the same thing if we're using tempeh or ground beef. Right. So it's, it's not harder flavor profile, any difference? No. And, and, I, um, we talked a little bit about it last uh, show, but there's all sorts of ways to, to build that umami flavor. We're using soy sauce, we're using cumin, we're using, yeah. um, you know, black pepper, mushrooms, lentils, um, you know, using tempeh, things like that to, to provide that texture, that ground beef texture. Love it. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Well, let's jump, let's jump into it. We'll turn, turn over to my, um, sure. my camera. First, I'm going to be making the fried egg sandwich with uh, pesto on a, an, on an English muffin. So we'll turn over here and I've got my, my griddle all, is all heated up Perfect. here. And you can see, I've got just some, just some tofu, slabs of tofu here. Um, now this I have questions. Yeah. I, uh, tofu. There's a billion different kinds. Yes. What do you look for in tofu? Yeah. It just completely depends on what you're, you're using okay, it for. Okay. I, extra firm is the most versatile. I'm using it as an egg today. You can make, as I said, the, the tofu feta. If you're putting it in like soups and stews, sometimes a medium firm is nice. If it's a dessert, the soft is great. Um, okay. And the only difference is, is just water content. If, if the water has been pressed out or not. So I'm going to get this started. I'm going to, I've got some, some olive oil. And the reason why I'm using olive oil is because uh, it adds a little bit of a yellow color to um, to the tofu. Okay. So putting that on. Nice sizzle there. It's a good sizzle. Yeah. And so while the, while the one side is, um, while, while it's heating up um, yeah. and turning a little bit brown, we're going to use uh, black salt. Um, okay. Okay. Well, oil. wait a second. Black salt. What is black salt? Here, I'll go there. So it's um it's called uh, kalanamak, and it's just like a sulfurous salt. You can okay. get it at the bulk barn. You can get it online, and a little goes a long way. So it gives that sulfurous smell that eggs do. Um, really? Yeah, and it's so great. So I'll put, I'm going to put a little bit of it on on the, uh, the egg there. See that there? Great. That's incredible. Uh, and, and so, um, about you know one to two two minutes on each side. This is the easiest fried egg sandwich recipe that you can that we can do. There are other versions of it, but um, but this one is is as easy as literally olive oil, tofu, and then the black salt. So you know, the, I guess the question I want to share with everyone today, and and this is why we got Amy on here, and she's doing all these amazing things, is as a restaurateur. Your client base is millennials and Gen Z. Like it, 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 that's where you're targeting, right? They're the ones that are dining out more and everything as we open back up. You need, I hate to say this, I'm not going to say you need it, but you should have a plant-based option or two or three or four on your menu. I mean, I think you're preaching to the choir here, yeah. but <laughs> I would definitely agree with you. Um, because then, then, you know, Oftentimes, if the person is plant-based, they're the ones that that is deciding where that where where we're going to eat, right? Yeah. Or where they're going to eat. And so, if there isn't a plant-based option, you know, everyone wants to make sure that everyone's included and they're getting everything that they you know they want or that they're able to eat. And so, you know, that dining establishment yeah. is not on the the list of options if it doesn't have a plant-based. Yeah, option. you know, I, and th and this was back you know twenty years ago when we said that with vegan food, right? You had to have a vegetarian dish. Yes. More than just a salad, right? And the same thing today. It's just you have to shift. And we're in the restaurant industry. We want to make money. And people will pay for plant-based products. I agree. Um, and I, I also would like to say, too, like, 
vegetarian options are great, but you can just make them vegan and then you, you're, yeah. you know, all your bases are covered. Okay, so I flipped it over and I'm gonna add some, some more salt on the other side as well. Okay, black salt. I've never seen black salt. Today, today is the day and it just, it the day. I wish you could smell it. It's just, I'll hold it up a little closer. Yeah, I'm going to have to get some. It's great. It's great. And if you're making tofu scrambles or you're making a chickpea omelet, it's also a great addition. Oh, okay. yeah. So while that's doing that, I'm going to pop my, my toast down <laughs> behind there and we'll slice uh, some tomato. I just have some, just regular tomato, what, whatever you happen to have, whatever is affordable for your operation. Um, this is an heirloom tomato but again use whatever you have look how pretty that is oh my god that is pretty <laughs> right oh, god, that's the nicest looking tomato i've ever seen look at that beautiful right um and then on the sandwich it's, it's quite versatile you can you can put what you have in terms of ingredients and um you know what you happen to have at hand yeah. today i'm using tomato i'm gonna be putting a little bit of vegan cheese on um, I have some fresh basil. You could put, you know, arugula, whatever green you like. Mm -hmm. And then I have a little bit of pesto right here that uses sunflower seeds in lieu of pine nuts, which we know is very costly. Um, yeah. and there's no Parmesan in this guy. So it's, okay, um, so what did you put in there again? It's basil, uh, sunflower seeds, um, you know, salt, garlic, uh, the usual olive oil. Uh, and basil obviously um, that's crazy yeah and uh, and using sunflower seeds in lieu of pine nuts which again as i said you know can be can be a bit pricey uh that's the thing too and also with you know with uh, large operations you don't necessarily want to be using nuts yeah. right okay so while that's um kind of sizzling there i am going to add cheese to one of them and then i'm going to cover it so that it melts okay. what kind of cheese are you adding there um, this is just a mozzarella, a vegan mozzarella. Okay. Uh, it is, um, it's cashew and coconut based, wow. but again, if it's cost, of, if it's too costly, don't add it, or you can make your own using cashews. Um, you know, cashews with a little miso, nutritional yeast, uh, blend that up. You can use things like agar agar to help uh, solidify it. Um, tapioca starch to help make it stretchy and melt. Um, there's all sorts of recipes online that you can, that you can check out. Do you find more people doing plant-based meals for breakfast or dinner or lunch? Like where's, where do you feel that, Amy? Honestly, there are so many options that you can do it for any of them. I mean, I'm biased okay. obviously, but um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> breakfast well. is super easy. I mean, there's, there's oatmeal, there's, you know, there's avocado toast, there's all sorts of, all sorts of different options. Uh, there are smoothies. I'm showing you a bunch today, the carrot locks, the, the fried yeah. egg sandwich. Um, and then, you know, for lunch, I've mentioned the chickpea chickpea salad sandwiches. Um, you know, for dinner, I, regularly we make like a, a mango. There's a mango tofu, um, a mango tofu curry in my cookbook that we make regularly. Regularly that I call the clean yeah. out the fridge, um, uh, <laughs> clean out the kitchen, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever, you know, and it uses up everything. Uh, but I think honestly, I mean, again, I'm biased, but I think you can really any any meal is a good meal to make plant based. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so I've got my uh, my my whole grain English muffin here. Okay, what are you I'm, putting on there? What's that? Honestly, just, you're going to think this is weird, but it's not. It's just a little bit of coconut oil, and it's melting on like butter. Uh, you can use a little bit of olive oil if you wanted to. Um, on the other side, I'm going to spread some pesto. And you could you could thin if the ba if basil is a little bit more costly you could thin it out with spinach right with rich spinach which is a little bit more cost effective yeah okay and I'm gonna put on my tomato okay and then we're gonna check on our sandwich here our fried egg do you have recipes like this in your cookbook uh, I don't have this one in it but I do have I do have yeah recipes for all of the meals there's and snacks as well. Okay, so we've got that, and then we're going to put on a little bit of basil. And you could, I've got ketchup here if you, if you know, if you were interested <laughs> in ketchup, you could add that as well. Okay, and there you go, Bob's your uncle. That's it. That's it. Right? Love Serve it. Some hash browns. Love Hot it. sauce, obviously. Obviously, obviously. <laughs> you're, you're one of those, eh? 
Yep. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to clear this space and then we're going to move on to the French vanilla toast, the cinnamon whipped coconut cream. Awesome. What we're going to do, Amy, is we're going to break for a quick commercial and we'll be back with our next meal. Awesome. Thanks so much. Here we go. Awesome. We're back with Amy, plant-based savings, recipes. Ooh, what's next? What's next? So this oh, is so, toast. okay. So we're doing French toast and uh, I'm going to apply the flax egg that I was uh, speaking about earlier. Okay. And I, I just wanted to show you how versatile it is that I'm just using um, uh, a French toast recipe from the internet uh, from uh, by, by Alton Brown. So we know him, Food Network star. Yep. Um, and so I'm just using his... French toast recipe, adding some vanilla to it to make it French vanilla, and uh, and just literally substituting the egg for um, for the flax egg. Okay, yeah, we got we got to look at this flax thing because I'm I'm curious about this. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Because flax is cheap. It is, and it's Canadian. And it's good yeah. for us. It's got it's yeah. a, an omega three fatty acid. There's all sorts of reasons why we should be. Now, is it true that you have to to get the nutrition out of it? It has to be crushed. That is that is true. Otherwise, it'll go right through you. <laughs> I did my homework. I did my homework, Amy. Good. Yeah, you're yeah, you're dead on. So yeah, so it does need to be ground in order to to work, but then also mm -hmm. to to reap the benefit, the nutritional benefits as well. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, I'm excited about this. Thank you. Uh, okay. Who, who so, doesn't love French toast? Right, and it's super. This one you can make ahead of time too, especially if it's large quantity. Make it ahead of time. Put it in some um, in, in pans, and then you know. Yeah. Shaking hands and then keep that that heated. Okay, so we'll first we'll start with the actual um, the actual batter that the uh, that the bread is going to be going into. So I've got my ground flax. This is okay. uh, three tablespoons. You bought and it. You bought it ground, or you not? I bought, bought it ground, ground. Okay. and okay. I do store it in the uh, the freezer to to um, help to keep it. From going rancid okay. um, all, all nuts and seeds generally i keep in the in the freezer or the fridge okay. depending on how fast you use it uh and uh i did but it, I, I keep it in the freezer nutritionally speaking too you don't want um it degrades over time so okay, okay. so i'm just putting that in uh about one and a half cups of unsweetened soy milk uh, and that is because uh instead i'm using soy milk instead of water so you could you could use water here instead if you wanted to uh to okay. save on the cost and then add uh, a half a cup of you know cream coconut cream or you could use um unsweetened soy as well but cool. um but in this case i'm just using the liquid i'm using here is soy milk but generally speaking if you're making uh, muffins or cakes or cookies water is fine and that obviously is free <laughs> love it okay cool so i'm just gonna whisk that in and then i'm gonna let it sit how long? Uh, I'll let it sit for about three minutes here, and then I'm going to transfer it to um, to a pan. No, why, 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 why is that? Why do you make it sit? Oh, so it just so it gelatinizes. Oh, I use a big word. Eh? Yeah, it just makes it gooey. <laughs> 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 it makes it gooey uh, uh, um, okay, and then I'm going to pop in some vanilla. Okay. And some maple syrup. So. Um, Alton's recipe calls for honey and cream. So I'm just using the unsweetened soy milk and I'm using maple syrup. And then I'm adding to mine, I'm adding a little bit of cinnamon. Nice. Maple syrup have a, a lot of good benefits for maple syrup. You know what? The research isn't 100% there yet in terms of saying that, you know, it's some, it's it's nutritionally superior to yeah. honey or nutritionally superior to sugar. It does contain trace 
uh, minerals, um, which is great. It's Canadian, which is great. Um, yeah. And there is some, you know, preliminary research that's coming out that's suggesting that it's a good component of like an anti-inflammatory diet. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. And then I'm putting a pinch of nut, pinch of nutmeg. You could put some cardamom in here, whatever you fancy. Nice. <laughs> okay. And then we'll give that another whisk. Yeah. And then I'm just going to set this aside for a moment. While that's sitting, we're going to do the uh, coconut cream. Okay. So I'll bring the stuff over here for that. So I've got a can of coconut milk, uh, just 400, a 400 mil can, can yeah. of coconut milk that I've chilled overnight um, so that it separates them. So we have uh, just the cream on the top. Really? Okay. Yeah. It will it will separate too, right? Cool. It will, yeah. Uh, some of them, if if your, if your coconut milk has a stabilizer in it, it will not separate. Okay. Um, and in that case, you'll have a coconut drizzle. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, if you, you'll want to look for coconut milks that don't have a stabilizer in them. Yeah, no stabilizer. Like, like guar gum, for example. Okay, let's get this coconut milk out of here, or this coconut fat out of here. Put that in. Uh, I put it, the, the the bowl here is a little bit cool, so I did put it in the the freezer for a few minutes. Oh, well, did that ever separate? Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. And then, doesn't it look nice? Yeah. And then I'm going to add a little bit of maple syrup because I'm Canadian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love it. Love and it. a little bit of vanilla. Again, omit the vanilla if it's not cost effective for your operation. And then a little bit of cinnamon. Okay, and then we're going to mix that up. What's the benefit? What's the health benefits of cinnamon? Oh, yeah, there's, you know, there, it's full of all sorts of antioxidants. Um, it's good for keeping blood sugar levels uh, even, Stephen. So it's been yeah. shown to potentially be a good component of a of a, um, a diabetes, like a anti-diabetes yeah. diet, so to speak, or a good part of someone a diet of someone who has type type, type, type two diabetes. Uh, and it's just really tasty. Yeah. <laughs> so the antioxidants obviously are great for again an anti-inflammatory diet in general. Good component of an anti-cancer diet. Um, yeah, and it's tasty. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna zhuzh this up. So talk amongst yourselves for a moment. Okay, I'm gonna throw another commercial for you. Zhuzhs. Looking for staff training, food cost advantages, interested in robotics for your business. Cisco Advantage features best in class companies to make sure you have the right tools to optimize your business and increase traffic. We have negotiated exclusive Cisco discounts with business partners to help you compete stay in the game, and focus on what you do best. Our collection of offerings includes specialized services, technology, tools and personalized consultations designed to make you more efficient, increase your profits, and make it easier for you to manage your operations. Visit cisco.ca or speak with your Cisco representative to learn more. All right, we're back. And voila! <laughs> no, no, really? Yeah, there you go. Oh, man. I want to a finger in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, um, so that's that. <coughs> and so our uh, our flax mixture has sat sufficiently. So we'll bring over a pan. Okay. And then we're going to pour that into the pan. I'll give it one final whisk. Can you, and what's in there again, Amy? The flax seed, ground flax seed, vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a little bit of maple syrup. Wow. Well, that's it. And that's it. Okay. And so obviously when we're doing French toast, we're using stale bread. So I just have some, uh, some whole wheat French bread here. You can use whatever you fancy. Wow. Brioche would be nice. Obviously brioche yeah. is not vegan. It has some egg in it. There are, ve there are vegan brioches, but... Um, generally have egg in them. Wow. Okay, so, okay. and then we just let it soak for, okay. you know, <laughs> on each side. So this has got to cut at least 30, 40% of the cost of a dish, I would say, 
by yeah, doing this. It does. Yeah, it does cost, cut costs significantly. Um, and obviously sustainable. We're supporting yeah. Canadian product. Uh, and it's just as tasty, just as tasty. Okay, so instead of butter on the on the griddle, I'm going to just be using coconut coconut yeah. yeah are you seeing more coconut uh in restaurants now as an option um i'm in? seeing more coconut milks i'm seeing more okay. coconut milks um yeah. i'm not seeing coconut oil being used as much i mean it is it does contain saturated fat um but the nice thing about it is uh it uh it has a higher smoke point oh yeah Okay, so we're going to get our toast on here. Again, nice little sizzle. Nice. I like that griddle. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, it's nice and simple. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and the best part, I mean, breakfast isn't breakfast unless you're using your griddle, in my opinion. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. So I think we have a bunch of stuff too that we can share um, for the for, for the HSI Canada website. The coconut cream recipe and um, yes, I do. Give me a second. I'm gonna pull those up. Yeah. So just a little bit about the Forward Food program at um, at with HSI Canada. I love the folks there. I've been I've been working with them for the last year. They're a great great group of people. Um, and we provide services to uh, large food operations and chefs across Canada, basically helping people get more plant-based options on their menu through workshops, culinary demonstrations, recipe development, menu development. Um, and the best part about our services is they're all free and you See, get to work with me. I know, but that's like incredible, first of all, that you guys do that. Like I was talking about that with someone yesterday. It was like, like look what they do. You guys really help a lot of people. And you're not there to make it all plant-based no not necessarily just to get more on the menu and that yeah. the idea is that if you do work with the with the the team at hsi canada it's a it's a 40 percent pledge so over you know the course the course of the year you're you're including 40 percent more plant-based options on your menu that's crazy. which is really easy to do that is crazy cool okay so So it needs about uh, two to three minutes on each side, so they're not quite ready. I'm going to clip them in just a second. So say, they're about the same time the normal French toast. Yeah, say. exactly, exactly. So I'm going to get my my <coughs> ready now. So we'll get this guy out of the way. And as you mentioned too, um, Jay, mashed banana can also be used in uh, in baking uh, at, in lieu of an egg. So again, wouldn't use it for scrambled eggs, but you would use it for, you know, um, muffins, cakes, cookies. Another good one too, is using, uh, uh, baking soda and vinegar together that helps, uh, with binding as well. So using that as an egg replacement again and baking, um, uh, yeah. And it's again, it's again, cost-effective, right? Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that you can help people save money. Yeah, yes. Like and it, and you're not compromising flavor. You're not compromising taste. You're also including more sustainable options on your menu. Uh, and it's better for people, too. So it's just a win, 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 win situation. <laughs> now, I'm going to bring up your website over at uh, HSI here Thank for you. the forward food. Yeah. I'm going to bring this up because everyone's got to check this out. Because uh, is this your recipe on the first screen here? Because hey, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty cool. <laughs> Let me just bring it up here. Give me a second. Uh, share screen. Here we go, folks. There we go. And uh, oh, here, here it is. There it is. Oh. This is crazy cool. You know what? That's not mine. It's actually one of the chefs who took our um, to, who took our course, right? What? Yeah. So they that's from uh, yeah one of the chefs who took our course, and we, oftentimes we'll like steal pictures that they do because they're incredible. Um, yeah, it's been wonderful to be able to work with can uh, chefs across Canada really cool very cool very, so how do they do this like what do they call you is there a number here contact us yeah yeah so there is on on the website and i'll just you can see i'm flipping the toast and it's looking incredible um yeah there's uh yeah there's 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 options to to work with us there's me there's my mug <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so cool yeah it's great you can reach out um yeah via there's email, check, 
Rihanna is the, the lady that you would reach out to, Rihanna or Alex. We are, we're a small but mighty team. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, and then, yeah. Just How long does it take? How long does it take for you to go in there and help them? Is it like a couple of days it takes or is yeah. it take like over it a month? Did, yeah, it, that, great question. It completely depends on what you're looking for in terms of your operation. Um, so pre-COVID days, we would do live um kind of workshops or kind of conferences or symposiums over the course of two days. Um, now what we do is it's over the course of two weeks, but it's just four, four one hour sessions. So like on a Monday and on a Friday afternoon and then on a Monday and a Friday afternoon and um, very easy again, just at home, wherever you are in your operation. Uh, and it's the good thing about COVID is we've been able to reach a lot of people. Yeah, I can imagine it. And again, it's free, so. Very okay. cool. I think right. these are good to go. Okay, we'll go back. Let me just remove that. Yeah, there we go. check that out. A lot, a lot of success, I'm assuming, with restaurants that yeah. work with you. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Like, ringing endorsements. It's just so much fun. People just love food, and that's what it is, right? We're just we're just cooking with food, and it's mm -hmm. good food. Okay. I'm blown away you guys do that. That's just incredible. It's awesome. I love Thank it. You. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to turn this off now and we'll garnish our French toast. So I've got some strawberries here. It's strawberry season soonish. I don't know what it's like there, Jay, but it's, we had snow yesterday. Um, oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, no, we're, we're good here surprisingly, but oh, that's great. not until you, you, you uh, don't get too excited until after May long. Oh, for sure. Which that's is my birthday. Rule. That's the rule. <laughs> it's yeah. just your birthday. Yeah. I bring the, I bring the nice weather. Very okay. good. Good. <laughs> Okay, so I just got some fresh strawberries there, and then whatever you fancy in terms of um, in terms of garnish, I've also got some mint. Again, whatever is cost effective for your operation, whatever you have or happen to have on hand, whatever is seasonal, whatever you're growing, all of the things. So I'm just going to do some fresh mint, and I've got the cream, of course, as well as some molasses. I don't know if you've ever had molasses on your French toast or pancakes, but it is life changing. Okay, first of all, I kind of remember that as a kid. Now I just I'm trying yeah. to think way back. Yeah, yeah. I think my grandma did that. Yes. So you know what's amazing? Do you, do you find that our grandmas and that generation actually were doing a lot of good things with food? Oh my goodness! So that's my 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 main inspiration was from my grandma. I, I grew up with her. Yeah. Um, she lived across the road on my family farm. So I grew up three hours southwest of here on a farm. It was established in 1834. And I spent all my time with my grandma. We grew on food. I can just still picture her sitting on her chair, you know, taking the ends off the green beans. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Every, everything um, from her in terms of cooking. My mom was more of like a canner, you know, she did that sort of stuff, canner, jam maker. And then my dad was the guy that just like threw things together. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But my grandma for sure was just, yeah, somebody who was a huge influence on me. So I can't agree more with you there, Jay. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, you know, one of my old chefs, he used to say, you know, a hundred years ago, everything was organic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cause you're growing it yourself. Yeah. That, people are growing in gardens, all those things, right? We do see that moving back. Like we do see it as, but everyone was like that way back then. For sure. For sure. Okay. Check this out. I hope you're going to snack on that later, Amy. Oh, you know it. I wish we could <laughs> problem with uh, the times, but it's also nice to be able to reach everyone. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to hold it up nice and close for you, Jay. Okay. Bye -bye. So, cool. so cool. And, of course, you would slather this with maple syrup. <laughs> yes, you would. Yes, you would. Great. So there we have. We have two um, two easy breakfast recipes. Very cool. And, and cost effective. Wow. Love it. That's all I got for you today. <laughs> Amy rock, he rocked it again. He uh, rocked it's, it again. Always, it's always a delight, Jay. Thank you so much for having me. And um, yeah, I hope it was useful. Yeah. Please, everyone, check out their website. I'm looking through it right now on the side here on my other screen. It's incredible. You guys have incredible stats. You got toolkits. You got everything for people to learn more about plant-based foods unbelievable i'm just so excited and always always a pleasure amy yeah and uh thanks mm -hmm. again for all the things you're doing and, and helping restaurants save money by doing all these great things and providing great food 
it's just a win, 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 win for everyone, right? It's awesome stuff. Thanks so much. And everyone else, we'll be back tomorrow, Influencer Fridays. We're reviewing Campbell's Soups. Good, great, or wow, I don't know. Chef Ellie will be on the show tomorrow at Friday. And then we're back next week from Tuesday to Thursday on tons of more shows on our SVK network. So thanks again, Amy. Everyone else, get out there. Have some plant-based food in your next restaurant visit. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Amy. Thank you.